Okay, so we've got the basics out of the way. Now it's just a matter of learning all these tags. So we're going to start, we've already got a couple of them on the screen. So let's just start with this first H1 tag. And like I said earlier, this stands for header one. And it's sort of a very common thing, especially for, you know, like websites that are blogs, they always have a title at the top or news websites with a, you know, a story that has a title at the top you'll often use this H1 and header tags are important because they make text standardized big, but also because search engines like Google assign importance to an H1 tag. You know, Google knows that if you put something in an H1 tag, you're saying, Hey, this is important. This is a headline, you know, it's header number one, the most important header. And it, it sort of uses that in order to categorize websites. So and also it's just cool visually. So, there are many header tags, uh, six, actually, <laughs> I don't know if you could call that header, or call that many. But let's just go through there. These are all numbered, right? So let's just go this is header two. And I'm just going to copy this. So if we save this, and I'm going to hit control s on my keyboard to save it's command s, I believe if you're on a Mac, or you can go up here and just click file save every time. So if we come back here, we see this is header two. And you'll notice it's slightly smaller, right? And that's the, the main designation here. The H1 is the biggest one, H2 is slightly smaller, H3 slightly smaller, all the way down to H6. So let's just really quickly come through here and go H3. This is header three. And H4. This is header four. And H4. Five. This is header five. You notice I'm opening and closing each one h six. This is header six. And the nice thing is about sublime, I just put the bracket and then the, the forward slash and it automatically auto corrects to the closing tag. It's, it doesn't always do it correctly. So you have to pay attention. But normally it, it knows which one you're trying to close. So go ahead and save this head back over to our page and click reload. And you can see boom, 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 all the way down to header six. Now, what happens if we try and do an H7? This is header seven. Save this. Come back. Ah, we just get normal text, right? This is very much like this text right here because there isn't an H7 tag. So uh, nothing really happens. In most computer programming languages, if you do something wrong, you get a big angry error on the screen or the program just doesn't work at all. HTML is very forgiving. You know, we just invented a tag just now h seven, it doesn't exist. And instead of getting a big angry error, it just said, ah, eh, and it just kind of ignored it and spit out standard text instead. So HTML, like I said, very forgiving. And uh, one of the reasons why it's so easy to work with, especially for beginners, you can make lots of mistakes and a lot of times get away with it. So those are the H tags. And let me come back here real quick and just sort of say a couple of things here. In reality, you'll hardly ever use most of these tags, you'll use h1 always, you'll use h2 sometimes for like subheadings, you know, um, I can imagine a scenario where you would use an h3 tag. But h4, h5, h6, I've been doing this 25 years, I don't think I've ever used those tags. Um, it's good to know that they exist, but excuse me, you're just not often going to use them. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll look at the paragraph tag.